Let's see, how about now? Can you guys hear me now? Let me know if you guys can hear me right now. All right, excellent. Yes, I didn't have the, I was talking for like two minutes and I didn't have the microphone plugged in all the way. Uh, I was, Charlie, thanks for uh, hopping on. I was telling you today or this morning that it was a busy week and I really wanted to get in the basement and run some trains. So that's exactly what I'm doing. And I thought I'd do a live stream a quick one just so I could test out my microphone and uh, you know next time I do a, a nice big live stream hopefully for 8,000 subscribers I'll know that you guys aren't going to have an issue hearing me <clears throat> I'll get the trains going here in just a second Let me look at the chat really quick. Burnsy, Sean, Matt Trainlover, Brian, Keith, Davey Patterson, DNH2906, John Garrett, Charlie, DeWitt Candle, Daniel, how you doing, man? Dexter Dog62, Steven, how you doing? JR, greetings, hey, how you doing, man? Jeff's Motorsports, Steve, uh, let's see, see, Union Pacific, Omaha, Garrett, Michael, RBP Trains, how you doing, man, Tony, Patrick, Arthur, I'm probably missing some people, Davin McKenzie, Blake Cooper, hello from Ohio, OH, man, let's see here. Yeah, tra Charlie said trains are good therapy. No kidding, man. People don't, not everyone gets it, but it's fun to come down here and just tinker around and run some trains. Nice way to unwind after a busy day. Let me get the big boy going here and let me know. I hope that, this is, see, this is interesting. I've got a, the microphone is on me which means you probably can't really hear, I don't know. We're doing this for fun. It's late at night. I don't expect a bunch of people to hop on. So I just want to have fun, get to your guys' feedback on how the mic sounds, if the train sound okay. Like, Like maybe I need, uh, I don't know, two microphones. Okay, if you can hear the train, okay, that's good. Here, let me turn the whistle steam on. I just filled it up and it tends to get jammed up. Yep. Let's see here. See this little thing. Must have not turned on at all. Let's see here. This thing can be a bit finicky. There we go. What's going on? There we go. So I I tend to find that the little the little nozzle here will get jammed up pretty pretty often. I find that the best, I mean, the best way to fill this up is with a like needle applicator. I don't have one of those. So for me, I put the, I usually put the smoke in right after I'm done running the train. And then usually by the next day, enough has evaporated around the whistle that it doesn't get jammed up as much. I really just need to stop being lazy and get one of the needle smoke applicators. So here we go.
All right, let me see. I'm going back to the comments. Dan wants to know, is that a new building I got? Uh, no, it's... I'll turn the camera in a second. It's just the Taco Bell and the Starbucks that I have had sitting in the corner for a while. Um, all right, Steven says you can hear the train, so that's at least good. Tony says you can hear the big boy. Dan says you can hear it. All right, now that the train's running, like, can you guys hear the train okay? You know, even behind my voice? Because I'm actually sitting on, uh, quite a ways away from the camera. Like right now, the big boy's on the opposite side of the room that I'm on, so. I'm sure a lot of you guys hopped on the live stream a couple weeks ago. That was like the one complaint was that it wasn't easy to hear me, especially when the trains were running. Sean, all right, I see your comments. That's good, Sean. Thanks for confirming. Oh, big boy smoke is clogged up. I mean, I, all right, Charlie said I can hear them, but it's background noise. That's a good thing, though. Attending my first JD Stucks live video from Colorado, says Gino. Well, welcome. This is technically only the third time I've done a live stream, so. I'm not gonna do them too often. Like, I'm thinking once a month at a max, but I did just get the new microphone, and I am, I'm getting very close to that 8,000 subs mark, and we'll do another fun live stream event then, so I want to make sure I've got my system down. Picture quality is not so great. Hmm. You know what? I bet it's because I turned... Here. So, Gary says the picture quality is not so great. Do the rest of you agree? Because it might be that my phone's not connected to the Wi Fi. DB says picture quality is wonderful here, and Paul says yes. Okay. A little out of focus, says Garrett. Cody says mine is great. Okay. I mean, I've got my laptop open. That's how I'm viewing it. And it's pretty good on the laptop. Like, I'm viewing it just the way you guys should be viewing it. But... Alright, let's get the intermodal going. Or maybe not. Psych. There we go. Do that. All right, what the heck? There we go. <laughs> it's funny. There's a, I'm like looking at my computer and also looking at the layout itself and there's a slight delay. So I'm like accelerating the train and looking at my computer. It's just kind of funny. So most people are saying the picture quality looks good. Some people are saying, a few people are saying it's blurry. Um, all 
Okay, good. I, I'm for those of you who it's a little blurry. I apologize. I I'm afraid it's probably something on your end. Um, I want to. I'm I'm doing the live streaming through my iPhone, and I want to. I'd like to make sure the Wi-Fi is turned on, but I also don't want to like end the live stream on accident. Uh, let's see here. I'll get another steam engine going here in a minute. I was going to pull the Norfolk Southern cars with... I'm not sure yet. Do you prefer Atlas Track over any others? Uh, Tony Davis, it's a good question. Um, so the short answer is I think Atlas is the best for what I do <clears throat> I don't think there's I don't think one track is you know the end all be all and it, it depends on what you want to do right so, you know, the, I'd say the best track, the most common track I, I think people use is Gargraves. Is it really good? It's a really good track. They make flex track. They're very compatible. You know, they're perfectly compatible with raw switches, wood ties, and the price is great. Um, so, I, I think the two best, like, the best track systems, if you're going to do the ballasting yourself, is either Atlas or Gargraves. I like Atlas because of the tie spacing. I think it's more prototypical, and the ties are the size of the ties are more prototypical. Um, but Atlas is very expensive. That's that's the big downside for Atlas. It was not. It's a solid nickel silver rail. So, you know, great performance out of the engines. Um, trying to think. You know, Lionel Fast Track, a lot of people love Fast Track. And um, definitely nothing wrong with that. I don't like track with built-in roadbed. That's just my preference. But again, there's nothing wrong with it if that's what you like and it works for you. I used to have MT's real tracks when I was younger. Back then I thought it was amazing, but that track hasn't, I don't think it's aged very well. But I used to have it on a layout, MT's real tracks. It was fun while it lasted, and now I use it on my shelves, and I have one siding down below that uses it. Um, MTH Real Tracks is a nice track system too, but I'm sorry, Scale Tracks. MTH Scale Tracks is a good track system. It's just very. I've never known a train store that has kept stock, like, you know, has kept it in stock. <clears throat> That's probably the biggest complaint. Alright. Let me look at a few more questions. Stay loaded. First time on live chat. How you doing? Yeah, YouTube might be defaulting people's uh, video quality to a really low, uh, you know, really low quality. So, like, try going to your settings and try upping the, the quality. Mine is set at 480p, and I, I think I, it looks like I can go up to 720. Yeah, it looks pretty good on my computer. Real Toy Trains, welcome, man. Jeff's Motorsport says, you're an MTH kind of guy, right? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, yes and no. Almost all my engines are MTH, but my rolling stock is like 40% Lionel, 40% Atlas, you know, 10% Weaver and 10% MTH. At least, like, that's the how I've been buying probably the last five years. I bought the most Lionel, then the most uh, Atlas. 
and then it's kind of a split between MTH and Weaver in terms of rolling stock. But engines, yes, um, just about all MTH. <clears throat> they all looking great, thank you. Yeah, I wish Atlas would make more signals too, uh, Code Ethos says. All right, I'm going, yeah. Charlie said Fast Track is great for modular railroads, absolutely. We use Lionel Fast Track on the uh, Detroit Three Railers modular layout that Andy owns, and it works really well. Ooh, Garrett, I know picking a favorite engine is like picking a favorite child, but there's always something that stands out, so what's your go-to engine? It's a good question. Um, A lot of good questions here. Um, hold off on the questions if you guys can. I'm gonna try to answer a few of these. Um, favorite engine, let me grab the camera. It is, that is a very difficult question. Um, and I don't have an end all be all, but there's a few that it's like, if I had to sell everything and only keep, you know, maybe four or five engines, there's a few that would probably make the list. Uh, one, the Norfolk Southern, uh, F7s. Um, I can't see it right now, but down below the layout, I have the. Uh, yeah, you can't see it at all. But my Santa Fe Super Chief set, absolutely beautiful. Um, I. Th this New York Central Hudson, this was a gift from my dad when I graduated high school. I really don't think I could part with that. Um, those have like the most sentimental value to me, I guess. Um, and then, I don't know, like all these trains I bought because I really, really liked them and I don't, would not have any intention on selling them, but those are the few that are really special. My dad's original train, which is not here right now, the like original Lionel diecast train, that's one as well. All right, let me set the camera down for a second. We're gonna get a, uh, like I said, we're gonna get another steam engine going in a second. And someone, someone asked, why didn't you put any underlay, foam board or home soap down before you laid the track? Uh, let me make, let me make, I'll start by saying this first. There is nothing wrong with putting down foam or homosote on your layout, like on top of the plywood. There is nothing wrong with that. With that being said, it's not as, um, it's really not that necessary at least not with the more modern, uh, I'd say smoother running engines, which run much quieter. If this was like a large old post-war layout with fast running Lionel trains running over tin track at really high speeds, like, yeah, the noise might be deafening and I'd want foam or home soap down on top of the plywood. But with, in my experience, the three quarter inch plywood, a plain cork roadbed, and well laid track work, and these command control engines, which run very smoothly. The, the noise from the bench work and the cars is very minimal. So I don't think it's as necessary as it once was. Again, nothing wrong with it. If you wanna, if you wanna use that method, be my guest. I'm sure you'll get great results, but like try going into a try going into a, a Home Depot and trying to get four by eight sheets of uh, home soap. It's really hard to get a hold of these days. I didn't use styrene on my curbs. I actually used uh, stranded wire, 20 gauge and 14 gauge. How much is that big boy? I think they retail, I like like MSRP on the big boy. That's the MTH Restoration big boy. I want to say it's like $1,600. Northeast Penn Central says, MTH Electric Trains is out in less than a month, so sad. 
Um, not if you've been paying attention to the news. MTH is still going to be continuing and making trains. Any post-war? Yeah, I do have post-war, but it's not it's not here yet. A lot of it's still at my old layout. Um, I'm, I'm catching up to the questions. Average train length? I don't know, 20 to 30 trains? That's what uh, Kelly asked. What's your average train length? I don't know. He trains 20 to 30 cars. The, the coal train that's on the layout right now is like 30 cars. Also, the big boy is like <laughs> really struggling right now. The sound keeps cutting in and out. I'm probably going to stop it for a second and check the tender drawbar connection. Gary says my favorite train is the last one I got. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with that. That's usually my favorite one to run. Which is why I've been running the big boy so crazy. Lionel or Atlas? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> they both make... I, I only buy freight cars from both of them and they both do a pretty good job. Atlas's quality is more consistent. Almost every single Lionel car that I've bought, I have to glue the coupler shut because they're just, they, they're just terrible. They break open all the time. But Lionel has been thinking outside of the box a lot with their um, freight car offerings. And I like that. Zane, I see your scenery question. I won't answer that now just because I'm, I'm so far away from starting that scenery. Plaster <laughs> is the short answer. Can you run a high speed Amtrak around the outer loop next to the intermodal? Um, I could. I could run the Amtrak or I could run another steam engine. What do you guys want? Do you guys want Amtrak or do you want a steam engine? Steam, Amtrak, both. Yeah, you would say both, Dan. 611, pretty please. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking about doing the 611. Eduardo says, sissy. I don't know if that is a joke or if you're being rude. I'm hoping it's the joke part. All right, so here's what I'll do. <clears throat> Let me get the 611 going here. I'll get the 611 going, I'll answer a couple questions and we'll call it a night. How long? Da, da, da. All right, let's do that. Should I uh, grab the Norfolk and Western auxiliary water tank while I'm at it?
There we go. I'm not in front of the computer, so if you're asking a question or making a comment, I am not seeing it right now. <clears throat> Let me check the big boy really quick because it's doing weird things. How long before we see the turntable? I'll show you. I'll show you it right now. It hasn't gone in just yet. I just need to check on the big boy really quick because it's having some issues. And... Do, do, do. I like have to use gloves or a towel to pick the darn thing up. Don't worry guys, I'll get the 611 going in a minute. I still managed to get fingerprints on it. All right, we'll get the... Don't worry guys, I'm coming. Well, uh, hopefully you guys think that this is, sound-wise, is a lot better than the live stream. All right. Track power. Two. Let's see if it'll find the darn engine. There she is. All right. Just, uh... I guess the 611 swings out more than I expected and it hit the uh, intermodal cars parked here. Alright, this is going to be uh, a lot of fun and a bit tricky. Basically, I've got to get the big boy out of the way. It's going to be a weird... Uh, I've got to fit both of these trains on the outside loop while I transfer it. Transfer it. Here we go. Six eleven. Uh, 
and bring the camera back this way. Let's set up about here for a few minutes. As soon as I get these trains running on their respective loops, I'll take a look at the questions again. All right, we're at the 35 minute mark. I think I'll go for like another 10 or 15 minutes. All right, now that the 611's on its loop, I'll speed it up and get the big boy going again too. Big boy's really acting up tonight. I hope I don't have to take it back again. Already had to take it in once. Just making sure I don't have my fingerprints all over it. This 611 is really nice. It's actually a Proto 2 611 that I got uh, second hand, but it was like new condition. I'm, I usually don't get too many used engines, but I got that quite a few years ago. It was a really good, um, a really good buy. So as you can see, like I can sit over here on the opposite side of the room and the mic Let's let you all hear me, okay? Let's get the big boy. All right, big boy is moving. I should probably set the switches right, because I don't have them wired up yet. All right, I'll take a look at some questions. I'll go back and try to look up some questions now. I'll grab the water tender. I forgot to grab that. Yeah, bad draw bar could be the issue with the big boy. Richmond Rail Fan said, what's up man? Love this channel and your trains. Hey, thanks a bunch. I'm just trying to trying to get better every time. Bring you better, higher quality videos. 
MTHUP 9000. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. What are your plans for the layout coming up? Uh, hopefully to get the turntable installed. I need to order my roundhouse. And uh, I need to finish up the track work for the little engine facility in the middle of the layout. And uh, wire some switches, cut some access holes, and then start start building the top level. What is the height of the main level? 36 inches. And <laughs> Richmond Rail fan said, wow, he noticed me. I, I certainly don't try to ignore anyone, but sometimes the questions come flying in and it's hard to keep up. But I think I'm keeping up right now. There's 180 or so watching. Railfan Brett said, hello, dude, what's up? I love your trains and layout. Thanks, buddy. Love that 611. Yeah, you should get one for your layout. Hey, I'm an N-scale guy, but I always have time for O-scale guy. <laughs> awesome. Do all the water tenders on the big boy have working lights? They do, but I don't have any of the, uh, like, drawbar connectors to make it work. What brand are the Intermodal cars? They are all Atlas O. And they're, all of the wells on them are die cast, so they're very heavy. How long is your layout? At its longest point, it's 33 feet long. And at its widest, it's like 16, I'm sorry, 13 feet wide. Alpha Killer asked how much was the big boy. Somebody else asked that a little while ago, but the MSRP on it is $1,600. Definitely the most expensive train in the fleet. Speed up the big boy a little bit. Big boy's acting really weird. Like the chuffs are occasionally dropping out. It's pretty annoying. All right, let me show you guys. Uh, let me do a quick walk around. Although nothing has really changed since the last blog episode. Um, so over here is where I was sitting to answer your questions. You see, I'm, I'm just watching it on YouTube. Um, so what I was talking about was like, I need to finish the uh, tracks for the middle part of the layout. Um, I have an access hole cut back there, but the, the panel is still in place. There'll be another access hole cut in this area. Um, here comes the big boy. And here's the turntable right now. It's upside down. It's upside down because I'm plan trying to figure out where it's going to go. My plan all along has been to have the turntable here and then the whisker tracks and roundhouse over here. It's definitely going to be a tight fit if I do it that way. Um, I've been discussing with my buddy Charlie this week of the possibility of flipping it. So putting the turntable up against the wall, the roundhouse over here, and then trains would like bypass the roundhouse, get to the turntable. The problem is I probably can't have a five stall roundhouse if I do that, because I want to have the track along the wall. I probably need a track coming along the front to get to the turntable. It's, I'm trying, I'm trying to figure it out. It's kind of a bit of a headache right now, but like, here's the plans for the turntable area. So this is like what I've had planned. I think what I'm gonna have to do is just order the roundhouse, wait till it gets here, which will take a few months. And then having both the roundhouse and the turntable will let me decide what I really wanna do. Uh, let me set the camera down for just a second.
the big boy is just absolutely driving me insane right now. I think I'm going to have to take it in. Which, for, <laughs> for how much money a big boy costs, it shouldn't have the sound set, the chuffs dropping in and out. Um, okay, let's look back over at the shelf. Oh, <laughs> here's my big mess after opening the turntable. Um, my couch is supposed to be here sometime soon. Um, yeah, here's the shelf. Oh, there's Family Guy, don't mind that. Um, all, all of the command control engines are here. Um, there's a few under the layout right now. The auto rack train is down there. The Amtrak train, the Santa Fe Super Chief, and my ethanol train are all parked under the layout right now. I saw someone just ask the question, why not expand the turntable area? I could do that. I could I could take it out wider. Um, the thing is, I really wanted to be able to like walk up to this back wall. Like I want to be able to sit. Like here's my furnace. I want to be able to sit here and you know, move things around um, in this area. You know, I can maybe bring it one more foot if I wanted to, but it's, I'm already kind of tight on space here. And I'd really like to have like a shelf on this wall someday. And like, this is gonna be walled off or curtained off or something, so. Um, oh, here's the, uh, here's the deck or the, the actual like, platform for the trains you, you definitely you have to take that off so you can flip the turntable upside down like that all right where should I set the camera maybe I'll put it back I'm trying to think of where a good angle would be I'm surprised how many people are hopping on right now for a Thursday night. We're at 45 minutes now, so I probably won't stick around for too much longer. I mean, I, I didn't plan this live stream. I just, I came downstairs and was like, hey, I need to test out this new mic. Let's go live and see how people like it. So now I'm, I'm catching up with the comments again, guys, so. Michael, let's see here. Oh, a triple crown car hanging off your shelf. Yeah, probably. Oh, yep, just a little bit. There we go. I moved it for you. Do you have normal up power for the coal cars? Don't know what that means. Is the big boy model actually powered by steam? No, definitely not. Layout dimensions, I just kind of went over that. How much you pay for the Starbucks and Taco Bell building? I don't remember, but they're from Menards. So if you want one, you should be able to find them on Menards website. Think about a 12 volt backup sump pump just in case you would lose power during a storm. I don't have a sump pump in this basement. This, is, this home was built in 1954. None of the homes here have sump pumps. I have backflow valves on my sewer drains so that water can't back up to the house. And I've had, um, I had my, concre my concrete for my driveway mud jack so that the water would stay away from the house. And we've had some pretty torrential downpours and power outages and I haven't had issues with flooding. Those O-scale cars are expensive. Yeah, tell me about it. One thing I sort of dislike about your layout is the tight turn radius, but that's just me. Yeah, um, the thing you're not seeing right now, I guess, is that the tight turns that you see on the, on the two opposite ends are going to be hidden in a mountain. Like, I don't disagree with you. I wish I had, I wish my basement space was five times the size. But like most of the tight curves on this layout will be hidden in a mountain. 
So use your imagination. Did you use MIG or stick to make the turntable? Don't know what that means. I didn't make the turntable. Millhouse River Studio made it. Uh, again, someone said, is that a homemade turntable? No, it's the Millhouse River Studio turntable. And the, the turntable question, the roundhouse and turntable will fit where I previously wanted it. It's just that the roundhouse is literally going to be touching the wall. And I'm, I plan to get the Altoona Model Works roundhouse, which if you've seen one, it has beautiful windows around the whole thing, especially on the back. So it would, you know, it would be a shame to have those windows just right up against the wall because you want to be able to see into it, not really enjoy it. Um, that's not the end of the world for me though. So if I can make it fit, I, I still think I want to do it that way. Will the big boy fit on the turntable? Yes. E the, the, it's a 34 inch turntable. And the big boy, even though the big boy is longer than 34 inches, uh, the wheels do fit on the turntable. You have to remember that the front plow and the tender have overhang, but the wheels will fit on the turntable. Do I do any end scale? No, I do not. Richmond Rail fans said, show us your shelf. I already did. Why not widen the bench work there at the turntable? I just discussed that a minute ago. Yeah, I, I did check the drawbar actually while I was putting the 611 on. I checked the drawbar on the big boy. I took it off the track, I disconnected it and resecured it. Usually that does the trick, but I don't know, it, it's still acting up right now. No, big boy does not run on real steam. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, there's two Hudsons on the shelf. I have no Illinois Central locomotives. Gary said, if you can run the big boy on another layout, see how it performs. I've done that. I actually took it to my friend Charlie's house the first time it was having issues and it had the exact same issues on his layout too. No other engine is having issues on my layout. It's just the big boy and they're sporadic. They come and go. I think it's draw bar related. I don't know that for sure, but how many cars does the big boy have on it right now? Uh, I think 30. It keeps coming by, so you should count it next time it comes by. Richmond Rail Fan, gotta go to bed, see ya. Well, Richmond Rail Fan, I I made sure to get that Triple Crown Road Railer back on the shelf for ya. Garrett says I should set the camera at platform level. I can try to do that. Yeah, I know, people gotta go to bed. It's I'm on Eastern time and it's about to be 10.30. Why don't you like CSX? It's not like I have, I don't have anything against CSX. Um, I didn't grow up around it. I grew up around Norfolk Southern. Um, and so I was always just a fan of Norfolk Southern and you know, their biggest competitor is CSX, so, like, I, I don't hate CSX, I just don't have a desire to add it to my layout. Trains of Chicago said, I'm new to the channel and subscribed. Thank you very much for subscribing. Helping me get a little bit closer to 8,000 subs. Maybe I can do another giveaway. If you couldn't have O scale or S, what scale would you have? Probably HO. Just because you can fit a lot in a small space. A lot of really good options. Um, hold on, is it frozen? I don't know why, but like, yeah, stream froze. Yeah, I see that now. Oh, uh, I see why. Um, 
Okay, the stream froze because my cell phone is getting low on battery. Which I guess is my cue that I need to wrap it up here in a second. Hello from Avon Lake. Hello, my hometown. What's the thickness of plastic under your bank curves? It's actually not plastic. I'm using 20 gauge wire and 14 gauge wire. Yes, I do have a UPES 44 AC. It was on the shelf. 4014 and HO, the big boy has 33 cars. Thank you, someone counted. Big boy is pulling 33 cars. Does the big boy act up on turns? Um, it seems to be in totally random places each time. How big is that layout? I don't know. I think I mentioned this 33 feet long at its longest, 12 feet or 13 feet wide at its widest. Put the turntable in the middle of the layout. No, I'm not putting it in the middle of the layout. I still have, I have, I already have plans for what's going in the middle of the layout. I think I'm gonna wrap it up here. I was here early, I subbed. Maxim still, thanks buddy. The intermodal cars with the top support holders, what are they called? Uh, they're, I've always just known them to be called Gunderson stack, stack train cars, I, I don't know. <laughs> Gunderson. <laughs> Everyone seems to call them Gundersons. Bob Conrad just joined, sorry late. Hey, no problem, man, I'm, I'm about to wrap this up. Already has gone a little bit longer than I was planning. Central Mississippi Rail Production said, I subscribed. Thanks, man. I appreciate the subscription. I'm glad so many of you enjoy the videos. Your big boy acting up scares me since I have one on order. Well, I've asked other people who've bought one and they don't seem to have issues. You know, every now and then you just get a locomotive that has an issue and you gotta go fix it. If I had to guess, they're, since they're doing the, the exact same run again, I would bet yours will be okay. Great start on your layout using three quarter inch plywood was a smart idea. Yeah, I'm glad I bought it when I did because plywood is stupid expensive right now. Three quarter inch is great too, really sturdy. The MTH big boy is the nicest big boy in Oceanville. I'm sure some Lionel people would disagree with you. <laughs> but I think it's a pretty darn great engine, especially for the price. Radar said, you have a very nice layout, thank you. Chris's train and village page, good evening. Evening Chris, have rib dog 589 said have a good night. Thanks, man. I'll be hopping off here shortly. Charlie White said, love that dome car. Colin, my big boy also stops chuffing like that sometimes. Yeah, I, I think it might be a drawbar issue. I'll, I'll, if I get it fixed, I'll let you know. All right, guys. I think that's gonna be it for tonight. Um, Comment, don't comment in the uh, in the live chat, but if you could comment in the actual comment section for the video and just let me know what you wanna see me run next time or what you think would be a good idea for the live stream. Again, just comment in the actual comments, not the live chat. Drake says, do you have any Canadian National or Canadian Pacific? No, I don't. I'd like to add some Canadian Pacific, maybe one or two CN.
<clears throat> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm going to uh, hop off now. Y'all have a good night. Thank you so much for watching.